Okay, so chapter three, uh, diodes. So we are going to study a new device in this chapter. And the 3.1 ideal diode. So we will start from the ideal device, ideal diode. Okay. And this is the circuit symbol of a diode. And we can see that it's a two term device, right? It has two terminals, okay? Just like a resistor, okay? But unlike a resistor, the two terminals of diode are not equivalent, okay? Right? This two di these two terminals are not interchangeable, okay? So actually we call one terminal anode, the other terminal cathode, okay? So they are different, okay? And then we define the positive direction of a current, okay? From anode to cathode, right? From left to, to right, right? This direction has a positive direction for the current, okay? And the voltage, right? The party voltage is defined as anode, okay? Negative cathode, okay? And this is the uh, IV characteristic of the ideal diode. Okay, we know that here we are talking about ideal diode. That's the IV curve of an ideal diode. Okay. Uh, the vertical axis is a current, okay, and the horizontal axis is a voltage. So this IV curve describes the relationship between the current and the voltage of the diode, okay? And then now we can see that, okay, there are like, two operation modes, okay? The diode, the ideal diode has two operation modes or two operation regions, okay? The first is just a vertical straight line Okay, which overlap with uh, the positive i axis. Okay, the second is a horizontal straight line, right, which overlaps with the negative uh, horizontal axis, right, the negative uh, voltage axis. Okay, so next, well, let's discuss why right, these two uh, modes one by one. Okay, right, first, when i is greater than zero. Okay, namely, by right, this vertical straight line, okay, right, which is a uh, whose current is greater than zero, right? This is a zero, okay. This region is called a forward bias region, okay? It's a forward bias region, okay? Okay. So, how do we explain this vertical straight line? Or, well, namely, what does this uh, vertical straight line? tell us about the device, right? This uh, IV curve, tell us about the device. Right, we can see that, actually we can see that this IV curve, right? This vertical straight line tells us that in this mode or in this region, the diode can pass any amount of current, right? Well, you see this, any amount of current with a zero voltage drop, right? The current can vary significantly, but the voltage drop is always zero, okay? So this device can pass any amount of current with a zero voltage drop. Make sense? So, next question is, you know, what type of device has uh, this kind of characteristic? It can pass any amount of current with a zero voltage drop. Actually, very simple. A short circuit, right? A short circuit.
So in the forward bias region, the diode actually can be modeled as a short circuit. Okay, it can pass any amount of current with a zero voltage drop. Okay, and then in this region, the dial is said to be forward biased. or turned on, okay. Or simply, we can see the dial is on, okay. So that's the forward bias region, okay. Any question? Then the Second operating mode, okay, that's a horizontal straight line, okay. But in this case, the voltage V is less than zero, okay. Namely, we apply a reverse voltage or negative voltage to the diode, okay. Then, what does this uh, IV curve tell us about the diode? But it tells us that no matter how large the voltage is, the current is always zero, right? This is zero current, okay? Voltage can vary, okay? But the current is zero. How do we model such a device? Open circuit, right? So in the reverse bias region, right, the dial can be modeled as an open circuit. Okay. And the, the dial is said to be reverse. or cut off. Or simply off. Okay. So a diode has two operating modes. Okay. Reverse BIOS and uh, forward bias, okay? Two option modes. In the forward bias mode, it's simply modeled as a short circuit, okay? In the reverse bias mode, it's modeled as an open circuit, okay? And then if we combine these two modes together, we can see that the diode current only flows in one direction, right? From anode to cathode, okay? The positive direction of the current, okay? Not reverse direction, okay? All we can say that the diode can only flows in the direction indicated by the arrow or arrowhead, okay? But please know that the circuit symbol of a diode looks like a like an arrow head okay and the, the current direction is indicated by this uh, arrow or arrow head okay so this is uh, actually what the diode does okay it only allows the current flow from anode to cathode not in the reverse direction. The reverse flow will be blocked, okay? Right, that's a function of the diode. And uh, how do we determine the operation modes of the diode? Right, we just learned it has two modes, right? So how do we determine the operation mode of the diode? Actually, very simple. Right? It can be based on either current or voltage, right, two equi equivalent methods, okay? 
for the valves, the current flows from anode to cathode, right? namely the forward direction or the positive direction. Okay. Or we can determine right, this mode based on voltage. Okay. In the forward valves mode, the voltage of anode right, tends to be higher than that of cathode. Okay, so that's the for the bias region. Okay, for the reverse bias region, okay, the current tends to flow from cathode to anode, right, namely the reverse direction. All the voltage of cathode is higher than that of anode. Okay, so that's a reverse bias. Okay, now let's take a look at some very simple examples. Okay, now let's calculate I, V of the following diode circuit. Okay, I pretty know that for most diode circuit, the first step is uh, to determine the operation mode of the diode. Okay, typically, okay, it's always to determine the operation mode of the diode. Okay. Right, for example, in the first example, okay, uh, we have diode connected in ser series with a, a one kilo ohm resistance. Okay, we have 10 volt applied on the top, ground at the bottom. So what's the operation mode of the diode? Right, it's a four the bias, right? Okay, why is it four biased? Okay, we can determine uh, from either current or voltage. Okay, from current, uh, we can see that this 10 volt drives the current flow in this direction, right? From top to bottom, right? from 10 volt to ground. Okay, then we can see the dial is four biased. Okay, all from the voltage, okay, the anode. Is connected to the plus 10 volt right, through one kilo ohm resistance. Okay. And the uh, cathode is grounded. Okay. So from voltage, we can see that it's also for the bias. Okay. So for the bias. We can see that the diode is four bias. If it's a four bias, how do we model the diode? Short circuit, right? Can be modeled as a short circuit. Okay. So just imagine now. I I I, think I don't need to redraw the circuit. Okay. You just uh, envision that in mind. Okay. Now we replace re replace this uh, diode with short circuit. Okay. Then how large is the voltage drop across the diode? Right. V is the voltage drop across the diode. Right. How large is V? Zero volt, right? Because it's short circuit. Okay. Right, the short circuit. So voltage is obviously uh, zero volt. Now how about the current? How large is the current that flows through that? Ohm's law, right? 10 minus Zero, right? Voltage drop across this uh, one kilo ohm resistance. Okay, since the diode is short circuit, so this node is zero volt. Okay, 
10 minus 0 divided by 1, which is a 10 million. Right? Very forth. Okay. Any question? Question? No? Okay. Then let's take a look at the second example. Again, we need to determine the operation mode of dial first. Now, what's the operation mode of dial? Obviously, it's reverse bias now, right? Because now the current, we kind of reverse the dial, okay? So now the current flows from uh, cancel to anode, okay? Or now we can see that now the cathode, okay, has a higher potential than anode, okay? By right, the cathode connected to you know, plus temple to so one kilo ohm resistance, okay? And this is ground, okay? So the reverse bias. When to reverse bias, how do we model the dial? Open circuit, right? So now we replace the diode with the open circuit. How large is the current now? Zero amp, right? It's open circuit, right? There you go, it should be zero amp, okay. Then how large is voltage? Should be 10 volt, right? The voltage should be 10 volt. Okay, very good, okay. Why is 10 volt? Right. Some, some of you already know it, but some of you probably are confused now, okay? What's the potential of this node? Or what's the voltage drop across the one kilo ohm resistance when the current is zero? When the current is zero, right? The voltage drop is zero volt across the one kilo ohm resistance, right? Then this node should have the same potential as this node, which is a sample, right? So that's the reason the voltage across the dial, uh, which open circuit is a temple. Okay. Very good. Okay. And uh, the other two examples should be very straightforward now. Okay. So in the third example, okay. Well, we have ground here, okay, and the negative five volt at the bottom. So what's the operation mode of this dial? Reverse bias, right? Because now current tends to flow in this way. The reverse direction of the diode, or well, it's against the arrowhead of the dial, okay? That's a reverse direction, okay? So it's a reverse bias. Then the dial is a, again, open circuit. Open circuit, right? I is a zero M, right? Open circuit, no current, okay? Voltage equal to what? Zero minus negative five, which has a five volt, right? Okay. Well, if you know that it should be positive five volt, not negative five. And it's positive five because it's um it's entering on that minus side, right? Because the minus side yeah. is three to four. That's the pretty pay attention to the the reference direction of voltage. 
This V, you yeah. see, is a plus minus, okay? So it's a zero minus minus five. Okay, okay. okay. Positive, okay? Okay, uh, the last example. Okay. Now, what's our pushing mode of the dial? Right. For the bells, right? You see, now the current tends to flow. Okay, this is the ground. This is negative five, right? So the current tends to flow in this way, in the direction. Okay. okay. Indicated by the arrowhead of the dial, right? So it's for the bells. Okay. Then we know it's a short circuit. Short circuit voltage is a zero volt, right? Current is a right ohm's law, zero minus negative five, right? Divided by two point five, which is a two milliamp. Okay, know that now when I plug in number, I use a 2.5, okay? Uh, yeah, so let's better use a, a carry the units during calculation, okay? Top is a volt, sorry. Top is a volt, bottom is a kilo ohm, okay? Then we end up with a two milliamp, okay? Uh, questions? No. Okay. Okay. Now let's take a look at a rectifier circuit. Okay, based on a uh, dial. Okay. Uh, in this uh, rectifier circuit, okay, later we'll explain why what this uh, rectifier circuit will do. Okay. Uh, what this uh, rectifier circuit does. And uh, now in this circuit, we can see a diode is connected in series with the uh, uh, resistance up okay and the vi is an input signal okay and it's uh, typically it's a sinusoidal signal okay and then we want to find the uh, by the waveform of vo okay and uh, i just mentioned uh, a moment ago but for dial circuit, first we need to determine the operation mode of the dial, right? Okay. So what's the operation mode of the diode right, in this rectified circuit? And we can tell that the operation mode in this circuit actually depends on the polarity of VI. Okay, so we need to divide our discussion into two cases, okay. First, during the positive half cycle of VI, namely when VI is positive, okay. VI is actually an AC signal, okay, right. When VI is positive, what's the operation mode of the diode? When VI is positive, the current tends to flow in this way, right? Then the dial is a forward balanced, right? Okay, the current flows in this way, okay? Then what do we do? We replace the dial with a short circuit. Okay. In the four device region, the ideal diode can be replaced by short circuit. Okay. So that's a equivalent circuit during the positive half cycle. But then what's the relationship between VO and VI? Right. Should be very straightforward, right? VO 
is equal to VI. Okay, right here, right. Here. VO is equal to VI. Okay, not equal. Okay. So we can plot. Right. The waveform during the positive half cycle of VO. Okay. They are equal. Right. We simply copy the waveform of VI. Right. Okay. We actually can also plot, by the way, can also plot a uh, waveform of VD simultaneously. Right? right? VD is a similar voltage across the dial, okay? Like right, this VD, okay? How large is VD during the positive half cycle? Zero, right? Because dial now is short circuit, right? So during the positive half cycle, right, VD is a zero. Okay, so this is zero. Okay, this is our region. This is our region. Okay, it's zero. Okay, very good. Okay, next let's discuss uh, negative half cycle. Okay, when VI is less than zero. Okay, when VI is negative. When VI is negative, right, the, now the current tends to flow in the reverse direction, right? So the diode is a reverse biased. Okay. Then the diode should be replaced by open circuit. This is open now. Okay. Then what's the the relationship between VO and the VI. Oh, now, how large is VO? When it's an open circuit here. VO is equal to zero, right? Because it's an open circuit, so there's no current, right? Zero current. Then the voltage drop across the resistance should be equal to zero. Okay. So that's the what happens during the negative half cycle? During the negative half cycle, VO equals zero. How large is VT? In the negative half cycle. Vd equal to what? Equal to Vi, right? Is it they are equal? Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's VD doing an active cycle. Okay, and then in the next part of a cycle, the diode is four bias again. VO will be equal to VI, okay, and uh, VD equal to zero. And so on. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, what. what a rectified circuit does, okay? We can say that it converts, okay? This rectified circuit converts bi-directional signal, VI, right? It's so bi-directional, it can be either positive or negative. Convert this bi-directional signal to unidirectional signal, okay? VO, now VO is a unidirectional, okay? Okay, the transfer characteristic 
of the rectified circuit or the transfer curve of the rectified circuit. Okay. Uh, we know that actually previously we discussed a transfer curve for for amplifying. Okay. Now here we also introduced the transfer curve for the rectified circuit. Again, this is a transfer curve right, describes the relationship between output VO and the input VI. Okay, a relationship between VO and the VI. Okay. And then during the positive half cycle, right, when VI is greater than zero, VO is equal to VI. Okay. Then the Transfer curve is this uh, straight line with a slope of one, right? The slope. Okay. The slope of this curve is equal to one. The VO is equal to VI, right? And the during the negative half cycle, when VI, okay, when VI is less than zero. VO is equal to zero. Okay. So the transfer curve can be represented by this uh, horizontal straight line, right, which overlaps with uh, the negative half of VI. Okay. Right, namely, when VI is less than zero. Okay. Right, VI is less than zero. VO is equal to zero. Okay. So this is an overall transfer curve uh, of the Rectify circuit. Okay. And then based on this channel curve, right. that's the waveform of uh, VI is given. Okay. We can easily plot the waveform of VO. Okay. Right. For example, let's assume this is a waveform of VI. But then we can use a this transfer curve to plot by the waveform of field. Okay. And then when V I is Less than the negative, right? Less than zero, okay? Right? VO is equal to zero, okay? So we have this part, okay? And positive, VO equal to VI, okay? So that's the that waveform of VO, okay? Right? So that's the, the transfer curve uh, of the rectifier circuit. Okay. Question? Okay, now let's take a look at another example. This example is uh, a little bit more uh, complicated. Now we have right, two diodes, D1, D2, and uh, uh, 12 kilo ohm resistance, uh, six kilo ohm resistance, okay, uh, plus three volt on the top, or right, next three volt at the bottom, ground in the middle. As I just mentioned a few times, okay, for the dial circuit, well, we typically need to determine the operation modes of the diodes. Okay. So we first for the circuit, first we need to know whether none, one, or both diodes are conducting or are full balanced or reverse balanced. But now we have two diodes, D1, D2. It is not obvious at the first sight. Okay, we cannot determine the operation modes of both diodes at the first sight. Okay. Well, for example, we're not so sure about the BIOS mode of D1. Okay. It could be either four wires or reverse wires, okay? Because uh, we do not know the potential of this node, okay? Well, if this node has a negative potential, then it's a reverse wires, okay? If it has a, a 
pilot, but it will drive this one into uh, for the BIOS uh, condition. Okay. In such a case, we can use the following procedure. We actually have a standard procedure for this kind of problem. Okay. First, we can make a plausible assumption. Namely, we, we guess, okay? But it's not a random guess. We need to make a, no, our best guess by observing the circuit, okay? Then we proceed with analysis right under the assumption, okay? Finally, we check if the solution is consistent with the assumption, okay? Okay, so next let's uh, use this procedure right, to solve this problem, okay? I know uh, many of you uh, are confused now, okay? But don't worry, okay? So let's uh, use uh, this example to learn this procedure. Step one, okay. Let's observe the circuit and then make a plausible assumption, okay. Actually, we can determine the operation mode of D2, right? What's the operation mode of D2? But note that in this circuit, okay, somebody already got it, okay? We know that in this circuit, we have the positive power supply plus three volt and the negative power supply, negative three volt, right? And the, the positive power supply always function as a current, current source, right? So current from, The current from the plus three volt always flow in this direction, okay? And let's call this uh, I1, okay? I1 always flow in this direction, okay? And the, the negative three volt always serves as a current sink, right? It's the most negative voltage. Therefore, this current always flow downward, right? Let's call this a I2. Then what's the opposite mode of D2? Why the current I2 flows in the direction indicated by the arrowhead? Well, that's a forward direction. So D2 is a forward biased, right? <laughs> so that's what we do not need to guess, but D2 is a forward biased. Okay. That makes sense. I think now that it's not because uh, only because the three volt is higher, it's because the next three volt is the lowest one. Okay, right. But we are not sure about the operating mode of D one, so we need to guess. So let's uh, let's have a random guess. Okay. Let's assume D one is a all about as well. Okay. Then we we proceed with uh, this assumption. Okay, D one is forward biased. Okay. All right, for clarity, let's call okay the current flow so D one as I D one. Okay, and uh, 
let's call this voltage as a VA, okay, of this load, okay. If D1 is full of ballast, how large is VA? Okay. Then we replace D1 with short circuit, right? So VA equal to zero volt, right? Then, I1 is equal to what? How do we calculate I1? Ohm's law, right? 3 minus 0 divided by 12 kilo. Okay, we pay attention to unit. Okay, therefore it's equal to 0.25 there. That's I1. How about I2? Again, we use the Ohm's law, right? We apply Ohm's law to the six kilo ohm resistance. Right, so we need to know voltage of this node, namely V. How large is V? Okay, yeah, but actually we need to find V first. How large is a V? Zero volt. Right? Because both D1, D2 are four volts. Right, so both of them should be replaced by short circuit. Okay, so V is a zero volt as well, but same as VA. So it's a zero divided by six, which is a point five million, right? Okay. Then how large is ID1? How do we calculate ID1? ID1 can be calculated based on nodal equation right? or current conservation. Right? I1, right, the current flowing into this node must be equal to ID1 plus I2, right? Therefore, ID1 O2 I1 minus I2, right? Which is uh, equal to what? Where is I1? Right, 0.5, I2, 0.5. So ID1 equal to what? Negative 0.25 milli. So does everybody understand this step? Okay, please pay attention to signs. Okay, it's very important. Okay, to have the right signs here. Okay, uh, that's how we define the positive directions of I1, I2, and the ID1. Okay, then based on those reference directions, why right, we have this nodal equation, I1 is equal to ID1 plus I2. Then we calculate ID1, which is negative 0.25 million, okay? Okay, somebody asked a very good question. Okay, actually that's a question I'm going to ask as well. So what's wrong here? Something is wrong here, actually. And when we go to the step three, we check if the solution is consistent with the assumption, okay? What's the assumption we made? We assume D1 is a forward bias. You see, at the beginning of this problem, we assumed D1 is the forward bias. Then we end up with a, a negative current, which means what? Which means the current, okay, this ID1 actually flows in the 
reverse direction, right? This is uh, inconsistent with uh, our assumption, okay? So the negative, negative I1 is uh, inconsistent with our assumption. Okay, does everybody understand this point? Right, that should be kind of obvious, right? Initially, it's in the four of us. So we're, we expect, we expect it. This current should be positive, right? It should flow in the forward direction. But now, it turns out, you know, I, I, ID1, sorry, not I1, ID1, okay, my mistake. ID1 is negative, okay, right? Then it's a inconsistent, this result is inconsistent with our assumption. So we made, we made a wrong assumption, okay? It's a kind of unfortunate, okay? We made a wrong assumption in the first time, okay? So we had to change it. So we need to redo this problem, okay? D2 is still four bios, it all, okay? Now we assume D1 is a reverse bounce. Okay. So D1 now should be replaced by open circuit. Okay. Again, please envision that in mind. Okay. So D1 now is open circuit. D2. What am I D2? Right, D2 is the on, so it's replaced by short circuit. Right, so one open circuit, one short circuit. Okay. Then we can. Okay, we immediately know that ID1 is a zero M, right? It's open circuit, right? So it's a zero M. Okay. And the I1 should be equal to I2, right? Right, this is just one, now it's one current, okay? It's one current, okay? I1 is equal to I2, should be equal to, how do we calculate this current? We apply Ohm's law from top to bottom, right? To 12 kilo ohm plus six kilo ohm. Three minus 93 divided by 12 plus six, okay? Which is, uh, which is one over three, which is a point, approximately point three three media. Okay. How large voltage V? Okay, voltage of this node. Right, it should be equal to negative three volt, okay. This voltage plus the voltage drop across a six, ohm, six kilo ohm resistance, right? Three volt plus, what? One third, right? One third times six. Again, the unit should be volt, okay? Right, it's a milliamp times a kilo ohm, right? So it's what? Negative one volt, right? V is a negative one volt. Okay. So this equation is based on Ohm's law for this kilo ohm resistance. Uh, questions? Yeah, I actually have a question. So um, the V that you just solved for is that is that V A that you're looking at? No, this V. At? This V. Oh, yeah. that fee. Okay. This fee. All right. Okay. This this fee. It's this fee. Okay. But you asked a very good question. 
เดี๋ยวเขาลาจุดวีอีกเขาลาจุดวีอีกโอเค how do we model d two or just three it would just be three right no no d d two we model d two as what short circuit short circuit so what's the relationship between v and the v a these equal right yeah okay They're equal to v okay so it's equal to what negative one volt negative one right negative one volt okay so please don't forget that okay i, I apologize that i didn't read you all the equal circuit okay so if you want to do that you can do it by yourself okay you can replace d1 with the open circuit d2 with the short circuit okay then it's very clear that va is equal to v, uh, v. Uh, which is equal to a negative one volt. Okay. Okay. Uh, somebody asked this question, okay, uh, in the chat. Yes, if we made the run or something the first time, then we need to make another assumption. Uh, but I guess, no, I, I think I understand your question. Actually, since there are only two possibilities, so actually, when we calculate that again, we are pretty sure, we actually, we don't need to assume, okay? Actually, we are pretty sure D1 should be in reverse bias mode, okay? Yeah, that's a very good question, okay? And that's a very good point, okay? So when we recalculate this, we actually, you know, we, we are pretty sure it's a reverse bias. But we can double check, okay? Even though we are pretty sure, okay? It doesn't hurt to double check, right? Let's check if this result is consistent with uh, our assumption, okay? Well, we assume it's a reverse bias. Now we end up with a VA of negative one volt, right? V negative one volt. Is this a result consistent with uh, our assumption? Yes. Right? Okay. Because this negative one, this is a ground. So D1 is a reverse bias. Okay. So consistent. Right. You can see VA. Right? The result is consistent with the assumption because what? VA uh, equal to a negative one volt, which is less than zero volt of the other end of the terminal. Right. Uh, questions? No. Yeah, Professor, is this the only way to check this then? Is a guess and check um, method then? Uh, unfortunately, yes. But actually, you, there's some way to check check the polarity easily. Okay, for this circuit. Um, I can I can briefly mention it actually. For this type of problem, okay, you can always uh, remove the diode, okay, which uh, you no know, you are not sure about its operation mode. Okay, for example, here we remove D D one. By namely, we actually can always assume it's a uh, reverse bias first. Okay, then we can estimate. We know that you do not have to calculate you know, the echo number, you just estimate. The estimate voltage at this node, namely V8. Right? We have plus three volt here, next three volt here, 12K, 6K, right? This two resistance, two resistors from a voltage divider, right? Since this uh, six Kilo ohm is uh, less than the 12 kilo ohm. VA will be negative or positive. I print that we only need to know the sign of VA. If we have 12K, 12K here, how large VA? If we have two equal resistance here, how large VA? VA will be equal to zero volt, right? Now, if we reduce this 12K to six kilo ohm, what are we having to VA? 
VA will be negative, right? Then we know this V1 should be what? Reverse balanced. Okay. Namely, you actually can quickly go through our second solution, okay, without you know, calculating the specific number, right? just to estimate the sign, the polarity of VA. Then we know if D1 is four biased or reverse biased. Does it make sense? Okay, let's, so let's actually we can test this method on this circuit, on this circuit, okay, this new circuit, compared to the previous one. Okay, here we, we switch the position of six kilo ohm and uh, 12 kilo ohm. Okay, now six kilo ohm is on the top, 12 kilo ohm is uh, at the bottom. Okay. So first, what's the operation mode of D2? D2 must be four bounds, right? Because of this negative three volt, okay? That's a current sink, okay? So the current always flowing this way. So D2 is a four bounds, we are pretty sure. We're not sure about the D1, right? So let's, uh, now let's remove D1, okay? How large voltage at no as this node? VA. As I said, okay, we do not need to know an accurate number. We just need to estimate its sign. Okay. We have 12 kilo ohm here, 6 kilo ohm on the bottom, on the top, plus 3, 93. So the potential of this node will be greater than zero, right? Because of we have larger resistance at the bottom. There'll be more voltage drop on this 12 kilo ohm resistance. So V will be positive. So what's the operating mode of D1? D2 is on, right? right. And we can assume now based on our simple analysis, our quick analysis, actually we we pretty sure D1 is a four bounds as well. Okay. So we can make this assumption, right? And uh, find the current voltage. Okay. And uh, eventually we can check, okay, if the solution is consistent with uh, this assumption. Okay. And actually we are we are pretty sure it should it should be uh, no, they should be consistent. Okay. So you can finish by this uh, example by yourself. Okay. Uh, questions? Uh, professor, by any yes. chance, would you have the answers to this example just in case when we do solve it, we would know the answer, if we got the correct answer or not? Um, okay. <laughs> We can okay. Let's let's quickly solve it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So four bounds. How large is VA? Let's call this I one, uh, I two, I D one. Okay. You know, same uh, labels. How large is VA? Zero four, right? How large is I1? Ohm's law, three minus zero divided by six, 0.5 million, right? Okay. Then V equal to VA, right? This V is this uh, voltage, right? Equal to V because this uh, is a short circuit, okay? D2 is short circuit, which is equal to zero, zero volt. Then I2 equal to zero minus minus three divided by 12 with a point zero to five million. Okay. 
Then I D1 equal to what? Equal to I1 minus I2, right? We just derived uh, this uh, formula in the previous slide. I1 is 0.5, I2 is a 0.25. Uh, so I D1 is a 0.25 milliamp. And we know that sign the positive. ID1 is positive. Right? Okay. So is this a result consistent with uh, our assumption? ID1 is four bios. Yes, right? There's a positive current, okay? Positive ID1 is a consistent with uh, our assumption, okay? Uh, 